Hello everyone, watch this review here where they look at the DC Universe Classics Iron and you know trust me Iron is in the package. I know you might not be able to see him with all the stickers there. I mean four stickers, kind of a record for the line. I think the only sticker he's missing at this point is the first time ever in six inch, but um two of these basically say not for use for children under the age of three, the other one says not for use for children of the age of four, but if it's not for anybody under four, it's definitely not being anybody under three. You know, but I guess it's just a whole bunch of different safety risks, uh, sharp points, small balls, you know, because big balls are good for kids. And um, I think it was just the other one was a metal warning, which is kind of suitable considering he's a metal man. Uh, speaking of the metal men, I could write all that I know about this team on a post-it note and still have enough room left over for my grocer to the list. So, um, suffice to say, yeah, not going to be all that helpful here. I've seen them in a few comics now. I believe they've had a few cameos on some of the cartoons, but as a group, not all that familiar with them. Although, Iron definitely is a nicer looking figure out of the bunch just because it's a really dynamic look and lots of detail, cool color, and... Out of the figures that you might need to pick up to build something else, he's definitely on the better side. But uh, hold on a second and we'll get him out of pack. Iron may also be a contender for the highest number of rubber bands used. I think I counted like six getting everything out of package. Uh, he comes with a pin with what looks like the JSA battling a metal man. Not of the metal man, mind you, but it's a robot and it's made of metal. Kind of a stretch. He also comes with a leg of dark side in addition to a fair amount of accessories, including his ball and chain here. It's actually a funny story about how those two met those crazy kids so much in love. And now, he's stuck with it. And also the wrench thing, which, you know, you might not have noticed in pack, but it is removable. Uh, parts of him are metal, parts of him are not. Not exactly. I know this part here is metal, and some parts feel like they might be metallic. But most of it, I assume, is probably just plastic, although it has a really impressive paint job. Really gets the whole metallic sheen down. I believe they probably tossed several layers there. Uh, displayed prominently on his chest is the symbol of Mars, also the masculine, known as the masculine symbol. It's for both the planet and the god. I think all the metal men have one of the planetary slash whatever symbols on them. Now, um, I guess most of the details mostly constrained to the front of the figure, where you have all the rivets and stuff, and on the back, nothing. You know, pretty decent. The character looks to be about standard height for the line, at around six and a half inches. In terms of articulation, we have a rotating wrist, single joint elbow, rotating bicep, ball jointed shoulder, head rotates, does not go up and down, or if it does, it's just not much. Um, waist rotation, although he has his tunic or whatever you'd call, I guess it's kind of like a tunic. All around him so you don't actually see a waistline. It is of course there. Now his legs can't really kick out all that far just because the material is really tight. I think you could probably get it to go a bit further in every direction except for the forwards could be rough but over time it will kind of wreck the material so it won't look as nice. Not something I'd recommend obviously. A rotation here at thigh single joint knee, and then single joint here at the ankle. Feels like it has some sort of a pivot there at the ankle as well. Now, as for the metal parts for this figure, I believe the... Uh, for some reason, some parts feel like they're metallic, some parts don't. It's hard to really tell. But it definitely feels like the fists might be metallic. And the arms feel like plastic. I'm just really curious what parts are actually metal, what parts aren't. So it's kind of hard to figure out. I guess part of it's just because the figure was kept in a cool place as well. But yeah, um, 
really decent looking figure. You have little pock marks and stuff, which I guess represents battle damage or the unevenness of the material. Here and there you have tons of rivets. Really decent paintwork. All in all, you know, just really decent looking figure. And probably would be a good sort of army builder if you're going to just like have some sort of a generic robot army for some reason. And also like a base for customs too as well, I believe. So yeah, this has been a look at iron from the dark side wave. Until next time, folks. By the way, this um, weapon arm here does actually work by spinning the little thing here. It will clamp. And then by reversing it, can go out a fair amount. So that's also kind of neat.